Hello viewers, welcome to News Week South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan carries out airstrikes in Afghanistan, Taliban retaliates. Pashtuns rally at UN against Pakistan call for action on targeted killings. And Baloch separatists attack Gwadar port in Pakistan. Tension spiked between Pakistan and Afghanistan after Pakistan military carried out aerial strikes in the neighboring country after a terror attack over the weekend killed seven Pakistani soldiers. Islamabad has accused the Afghan Taliban of hosting anti-Pakistan terrorists on its soil. Afghan Taliban warned Pakistan of uncontrollable consequences over the violation of its aerial space and attacked several Pakistani military bases along the border in response to the aerial attack. Let's delve into the details in our report. Tensions between Pakistan and the Taliban are on the rise once again as clashes escalate along the Afghanistan-Pakistan border. On March 18th, at approximately 3 a.m. local time, Pakistan conducted two airstrikes in the Paktika and coast provinces of eastern Afghanistan. However, according to Taliban officials, the airstrikes resulted in the deaths of at least eight civilians, including women and children. Pakistan, on the other hand, admitted to conducting airstrikes, but not in Afghanistan. Islamabad claims the operation targeted bases of the Tehrik-e Taliban Pakistan within its own territory. Pakistani officials assert that eight terrorists were killed in the operation. The airstrikes come in retaliation for an attack that claimed the lives of seven Pakistani troops within the country's territory. President Asif Ali Zardari vowed to retaliate against the perpetrators. Mere Bahadur. भाइयों बेटों दोस्तों जो सरहद की हिफाजत कर रहे हैं मैं आपसे यह वादा करता हूं कि यह मेरे बेटों का खून रागा नहीं जाएगा और हम इस खून का हिराज लेंगे इनसे सबसे हिराज लेंगे पाकिस्तान ने यह तय कर लिया है कि जो भी हमारे सरदों पे या हमारे घर में आके या हमारे मुल्क में आके जो भी टेररिज्म करेगा हम उसका मुंह तोड़ जवाब देंगे चाहे वो कोई भी हो किस मुल्क से भी हो द तालिबान ऑन द अदर हैंड कंडेम द एयर स्ट्राइक्स बाय द पाकिस्तानी मिलिट्री द तालिबान इशूड अ स्टेटमेंट दैट सेड द इस्लामिक एमिरेट ऑफ अफगानिस्तान व्हिच हैज अ लॉन्ग एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल against the superpowers of the world does not allow anyone to invade in its territory. Pakistan should not blame Afghanistan for the lack of control, incompetence and problems in its own territory. Beyond mere words, the Taliban did hit back at Pakistan militarily too. There were reports of gunfight near the Afghan Park border. Apparently, the Taliban fired at Pakistani military positions. This exchange signals a cycle of retaliatory actions between the two factions. Late in 2020, when Taliban took over Kabul, everybody was thinking that what a great victory that this has been for Pakistan, that they have fooled the United States, all the while supporting the Taliban. And a lot of people thought that this was a master stroke by, Afghanistan, by Pakistan, that they now have a ally to their uh, west which is completely under their control that was an overstatement even then and it has turned out to be a complete lie now what they have got on their western front is not an ally but an autonomous body an autonomous movement on its own which will do what it wants to do and it will basically keep on pushing Pakhtun nationalism wherever it finds so that's what has happened in 2021 Pakistan supported the Taliban's takeover of Kabul. Islamabad urged the global community to work with the Taliban to give them aid. 
In fact, Pakistan stood alone among nations in backing the return of the Taliban to power in Afghanistan. However, Pakistan's stance shifted as it sought the Taliban's assistance in combating Tehrike Taliban Pakistan. The TTP shares ideological alignment with the Taliban and seeks to establish an Islamic caliphate by overthrowing the current regime. Pakistan hoped that the Taliban would use their influence and power to control TTP. However, reality on ground is completely opposite. Despite Pakistan's hopes for cooperation, a United Nations report has revealed that the Taliban are generally sympathetic to TTP aims. Besides supplying weapons and equipment, Taliban rank and file, Al-Qaeda Corps and AQIS fighters assisted TTP forces in cross-border attacks. There is no doubt that Afghanistan under the Taliban continues to be a breeding place for terrorists. But at the same time, Pakistan is also responsible for growing terrorism in the region. However, Islamabad cannot play a victim card just by blaming the Taliban rulers for promoting and sponsoring terror organizations like TTP. It is also equally responsible for the fact that terrorist activities continue to increase, posing a security challenge in the region. In a show of defiance against human rights violations, Pashtun took to the streets outside the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, decrying the treatment of their community in Pakistan. The Pashtun Tahafuz movement leads the charge, shedding light on extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances and systematic oppression faced by Pashtun activists. We have this report. Pakistan, which has been facing allegations of crushing rights of minorities, has been exposed yet again. Pakistani Army! Protests are being witnessed outside United Nations Human Rights Council on the sidelines of the 55th session. On March 19th, Pashtuns staged anti-Pakistan demonstrations to denounce a crackdown on leaders of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement. The protesters emphasized that human rights violations in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province are a matter of grave concern and urged the international community, particularly the United Nations, to take notice. The protesters also urged the United Nations to intervene to stop the systematic torture against human rights defenders, journalists and PTM activists of Pashtun ethnic minority including Gilaman Wazir, Eid ur Rahman Wazir and Zakim Wazir. They called upon the international community to compel Pakistan to release arbitrarily detained PTM activists and leaders including Noor Ullah Tareen and Idris Khatak. We are organizing a protest demonstration in front of the United Nations Human Rights Council to denounce the systematic use of torture by Pakistan to stifle our freedom of expression and uh, our right to assembly. Here, the speakers uh, have condemned the torture of the PTM leader Manzoor Ahmed Bashin, the arbitrary detention of Nurul Lahtarin, who is languishing in jail for the last four months, and also this uh, great human rights defender Idris Khatak, um, who is languishing in jail for the last uh, few years. Uh, that is a real matter of concern uh, for the human rights defenders and we request international community, particularly uh, the United Nations, uh, to take notice of these uh, gross human rights violations. Pashtuns are an ethnic group primarily residing in the border regions of Pakistan and Afghanistan, with a significant presence in both countries. The Pashtun community in Pakistan has faced various human rights violations, including extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances and discrimination. The Pashtun Tahafuz movement has emerged as a vocal advocate for Pashtun rights internationally, drawing attention to these injustices 
and calling for accountability from the Pakistani government and security forces. The PTM accuses the Pakistani military of unjustly targeting civilians in its operations against the Pakistani Taliban and that it needs to answer for missing persons. PTM Europe uh, members are here together uh, with a heavy heart uh, to shed light um, to, uh, on the great injustices uh, that uh, PTM members face in Pashtun, Baloch, uh, Sindhis, Kashmiris face in, in, uh, in Pakistan. We are here to make, uh, to be their voice. Uh, you know, uh, forced disappearances, uh, ra uh, raids on homes, unlawful uh, arrests, torture of men, women, even children, and targeted killings are regular occurrences in Pashtun Belt and also in Balochistan. That's why we are here to be their voice, to show uh, for the world uh, and, and to ask attention of them. The Pakistan Army has conducted several military operations and counter-insurgency campaigns in the Pashtun majority areas such as the federally administered tribal areas, Feta and parts of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province and claimed elimination of terrorists and their networks at the end of every military operation. However, the reality on the ground tells a different story. Pakistan is conducting slow-motion genocide of Pashtuns on the pretext of war on terror. The Gwadar port in Pakistan came under attack yet again. The port came under attack as armed assailants forcibly entered the port authority complex and opened fire at the security officials. Reports suggest that the assailants carried out multiple blasts at the port. This incident adds another layer of complexity to Pakistan's security situation as their military faces conflicts on multiple fronts. On March 20th, Pakistan's Gwadar Port Authority complex came under attack after armed assailants forcibly entered the area and opened fire. Multiple blasts were reported from the site and intense firing between attackers and security forces took place. At least two Pakistani soldiers were killed in the attack and eight gunmen were killed in the retaliatory firing. Majid Brigade of the Balochistan Liberation Army or BLA, an armed rebel group in the region, has claimed responsibility for the attack. BLA calls itself the armed front of the secessionist Balochistan movement seeking independence from Pakistan. I think the morale and the capacity and the courage of the Baloch freedom fighter against Pakistani state are so much high. This incident, I mean yesterday, when they are taken on the, such an area, I mean there are, you can say, the security level is more than a president, president's security. And going them and killing their people and capture them all the area, for more than 10 or 12 hours, I think this is the clear message to Pakistani state, Pakistani intelligence agencies that we are capable, we can do whenever we want and no one cannot control us. We recently seen so many operations against Baloch militants and freedom fighters in Balochistan. Each and every day there was a bombardment from the jets and the helicopters in their places. But this recent incident show us clearly that they are still capable, they have capacity and they can do whenever they want. This is not the first time a Chinese project has come under attack in Balochistan. In fact, last year in August, gunmen attacked a convoy of Chinese workers in Gwadar with the separatist Balochistan Liberation Army claiming responsibility for the attack. Gwadar is located near a crucial oil shipping route in the Arabian Sea. The deep water port is key to the multi-billion China-Pakistan economic corridor. It holds immense significance not only for Pakistan 
but also for China's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative. While touted as a symbol of economic development, the reality on ground tells a different story. China has invested billions of dollars in Pakistan as part of its CPEC project. And Islamabad's repeated financial mistakes has forced the country to be trapped in China's debt trap diplomacy. Today, Gwadar city in Balochistan is being fully occupied by China and the indigenous Baloch people have been forced to shut their businesses and migrate to other areas. I think Baloch already has told to the state that this is our land. We are not interested in China-Pakistan economic corridor and we are nothing to do with the Chinese, with the Pakistani. They are demanding for their land, for their resources. I don't think so. Not even Pakistan, not any other countries can do development and barrel up the gun and with kidnapping innocent people, torturing innocent people, blackouting the media. I think these tactics are very old. Baloch people are happy with the CPEC. It is totally unfair. And Baloch are demanding their own land. They need independence. They need autonomy. They need their own resources, ownership. So I don't think so. China or Pakistan or, or any other countries can enter in the Balochistan and claim we are doing this development for the Baloch and this development for the Baloch. I think this is totally dishonest. The Baloch are seeing no political solution to their issue and have taken up arms to show their resistance against Pakistan and China in Balochistan. The Baloch are fighting for their rights politically and with armed struggle. On the other hand, Pakistan army has increased its cruelty against the Baloch and have been abducting, torturing and killing the Baloch political activists, student leaders and intellectuals. Global media outlets have time and again highlighted the discovery of hundreds of bodies of suspected armed separatists and political activists in Balochistan province, pointing to extrajudicial killings by Pakistan security forces. All this has given birth to insurgency and many Baloch have taken up arms to revolt against Islamabad, especially Pakistan Army and the Inter-Services Intelligence. For decades, the Baloch have endured poverty, unemployment and illiteracy. But the plight doesn't end there. The Pakistan Army's human rights violations threaten their very existence. Recently, during the 55th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, prominent Baloch activists took a stand shedding light on the deteriorating situation. Their plea urging the international community to intervene. We have a report. The Baloch have been facing unimaginable pains for the past several decades. Not only are they suffering from issues like poverty, unemployment and illiteracy, but human rights violations committed by the Pakistan Army are eliminating the Baloch. A majority of Baloch who demand independence from Pakistan's forceful occupation are being targeted by Pakistani security forces. The activists and intellectuals are being kidnapped, tortured and brutally killed. Recently, during the 31st meeting of the ongoing 55th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council, Baloch activists highlighted the deteriorating rights situation in Balochistan and urged the international community, particularly the United Nations, to intervene. For over seven decades, the people of Balochistan have experienced oppression, exploitation and denial of their fundamental rights under Pakistani rule. Since its forcible annexation in 1948, Balochistan has been subjected to systematic injustices, including political marginalization, economic exploitation and cultural suppression. To add to this, Pakistan is committing heinous crimes in the region, such as genocide. Today, I stand before you to urge the United Nations to recognize the legitimate aspirations of the Baloch people 
for self-determination, denying the right assembly to the Baluch people, enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings, and the arbitrary arrest have become commonplace, as the Pakistani state seeks to silence dissent and crush Baluch resistance. It is time for the international community to heed the calls of the Baluch people and support their quest for self-determination. The UN must intervene to ensure that the Baluch people of Baluchistan can decide their own future. The people of Balochistan not only suffer at the hands of the army, Pakistan's current economic situation and its repeated borrowings from China have also proved to be a trouble for the Baloch community. Islamabad's repeated financial mistakes have forced the country to be trapped in China's debt trap diplomacy. China has invested billions of dollars as part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project which passes through Gilgit Baltistan and stretches to Balochistan. In the name of mega projects, Naila Kadri Baloch, a prominent Baloch political activist and leader, during the ongoing 55th session of the UNHRC, highlighted the suppression by Pakistani administration of the people of Balochistan. She highlighted how the so called multi billion dollar projects of the China Pakistan Economic Corridor have now become a testament to the struggle of the Baloch community. People of Balochistan are in quest of all human rights, including right to life with freedom. Our sovereign rights on our land, ports and resources have been taken away. We are not part of any development as planners or beneficiaries. The China-Pakistan-Iran economic corridor has become a death sentence for the Baloch people. In the name of mega projects, our villages are being demolished, people displaced, raising voice against injustices related, resulted into a genocide. The occupier state of Pakistan and Iran have license to kill, rape and force disappear us. The Baloch are suffering both socially and financially. A large number of them who have migrated to other countries for their safety are now demanding the United Nations and other human rights organizations to protect their Baloch identity. They have high hopes from the international community as they continue to fight against repressive policies of Pakistan. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.